This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm gonna shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Cross the car. Grab it. Skip the combine. Can you tell me that makes me an asshole? No one's done it before. Why should I parade myself around like a piece of ass? I'm a Buckus Award winner, not a fucking beauty queen. You're jumping out of FSU early. I just don't want to see you rule out teams or get an unreachable draft number in your head. I mean, those are the kind of expectations that can kill a guy. Well, my number's five. Your draft number or your IQ? <laughs> Funny. You know, I had 15 other agents out here to see me. I like you, man. You shoot straight, you drive a cool car, and you got awesome hair, but... I can't lie to you, Justin. I felt more love from the F-350, dude. At least he brought me a proper gift. Now that's the kind of stuff that makes you sound like an asshole. Yeah, man, that's a clip from Ballers, man. It's season two right now, and that voice you heard was Jason, one of the agents that, uh, well, that one of the agents that you'll find in Ballers. I watched this because I'm a big fan of The Rock. You right. know what I mean? Right. And um, anything he t he might be the most busiest worker in Hollywood right now. I don't know anybody who works more than The Rock. Are we allowed to call on The Rock anymore? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we can still call him The Rock, right? Yeah. And, and then one, one he of loves the, it. He loves that? He okay, loves okay, it. okay, okay, okay. Good, good. And one of his co-stars is with us right now, yep. man. I want to officially welcome you to the show. Last time there was some mis mix-up in the scheduling, and we were going to have you on, and you were somebody I said I wanted to have on um, because I think you're extremely talented. Um, and there's a couple uh, projects that you worked on that I happened to watch. And didn't even know your relation to your what your bloodline was, and just thought you were talented, uh, stand out. But man, I'm a big fan of your grandfather's too, bro. Oh, I appreciate yeah, that man. very much. His grandfather is Henry Fonda. Mm -hmm. All right, Troy Garrity is here, ladies and gentlemen. Troy, come on, man. Thank you, thank man, you, dude, man. Well, the feeling is mutual because I'm a big fan of yours and Heather's. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, I listen to you all the time. Oh, that's what's up, and, man. And uh, you were you you know you came to L.A. when we needed you as well because mm -hmm. we struggled uh, mm -hmm. musically on the radio for a long time in mm -hmm. L.A. We always were like the forgotten stepchild of New York radio. Mm -hmm. um, so you know it took us a while to catch up, and you sort of stepped in right when we you know, yeah when we that's what you. Sway and Tech with the world famous Wake Up Show. We came great. down there, and it was, was some great, great years. We had on a, on the station out there the beat, and then uh, yeah. we had uh, Mike Nardone and, and and King Ems was doing the joint. Mm -hmm. You had Julio G and Easy E and them doing uh, West Side Radio. We were doing the world famous Wake Up Show. You know, about four years before that, yeah. there wasn't anything. All we had was K Day, and that was yeah. an AM station. Yeah, and on Sundays they were gospel. Yeah. So other than that, wow. it was there was it was just an arid landscape. You know, it was yeah. like. If you wanted to hear some hip hop or anything, you had to just put in a tape because you can, you can radio no, because Power One Hundred Six, it was like no hard hip hop. No. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was like right. no gangster rap. It, yeah. it, it, you know, like, this is not that long. We're talking about no the nineties, no yeah. Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, any, you know they would play the songs, and and this is why we talk when artists come up and they take airplay for granted. Not too long ago, they would play songs. And eliminate the rap out. Oh, oh yeah, the rap verse never got to never got to play. Never True. got play, right? No, you know Troy Garrity is here. Did I say that already? <laughs> All right, and, and then so <laughs> you can say it again. Okay, Troy Garrity is here. Did I say that? <laughs> All right, and then and then um, Troy. This is where I knew he was like I saw him at the hip hop uh, honors, women mm -hmm. in hip hop. Yeah, a couple weeks back, and I was sit, st standing against the wall, and I looked over, and Kelly was with me. She said, "Yo, is that Troy over there?" I was looking like, "What is Troy Garrity doing?" Oh, my fair. God. And then we oh. caught each other's eyes, and I had to walk all the way around just to give you a hug and say, I apologize you didn't come on the show last time. Well, I time. ran halfway to meet you just because I was so okay, excited. Was it the slow motion like, dun, yeah, dun, dun, yeah, dun, 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 that was it. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, it really was. We were like jumping over embrace. people. Yeah. Yeah. Chariots of Fire, bro, was in the background. Yeah, okay? it, was. it was. And then we embraced, and everybody looked at us like, is this a moment? Like Apollo and Rocky on the beach? Well, they, yeah, it was like, Troy is. It really was. Is that you, Troy? I'm coming yes. to you. Yeah, so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, well, it happened. Okay, thank you, bro. I appreciate that, man. But congratulations on Ballers. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. It's, it's a fun series. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like we're getting some insight. Like Entourage gave us insight. I feel like gave us in a fun kind of way insight to what goes on behind the scenes in Hollywood. This is giving us some real insight on what goes on behind the scenes and, and professional football, right? Is it accurate to you? Yeah, I think in its, you know, best version, that's what it is. You know, we can all look online at 
TMZ or whatever and mm-hmm. see like, oh, so and so got into trouble or concussion this or that. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is really sort of about the transactional process that you don't really see, that mm-hmm. how you clean up the mess of someone getting into trouble or how one does take steps into getting into trouble or how one does take steps into succeeding. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the acceleration of life when you depart college and you put into a, you know, a giant corporate mm-hmm. uh, institution, mm-hmm. millions of dollars thrown at you, it's, you know, it's it's hard on a young kid. Yeah, man, all that money being thrown at you. <laughs> yeah, it's so difficult. Yeah, but l- let me tell you this. I, I I understand what you're saying, Yeah. but, you know, I think it's 90% of football players are bankrupt four years out, out of the league. Yeah. The 90? Av- Damn. The average career is three and a half years, and the average lifespan is 55. So Uh-oh. at the bottom of this com- of this comedy, there's, you know, there's gravity. Yeah. And that's sort of our challenge is... How do we keep it light? How do we keep a real perspective? And that there's also, you know, there's there's uh, real circumstances. You know, mm-hmm. there's a there's a consequences rather. Yeah, con- yeah. So, uh, but but that being said, we have a lot of fun with it. You have a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I was just watching the latest episode. Uh, matter of fact, last night because I knew you were coming by. I didn't get a chance to watch it Sunday because I was working. And uh, yeah, man, you were making a phone call to uh, the Rock's character Spence and and in the middle of it, there was a dilemma that you didn't really want to handle. Somebody had broke their ankle or something. I don't know. Uh, twisted, busted the Achilles. And, and 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 as you were talking, there was this girl riding you on your lap. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, baby. Yeah. yeah. That my the my the way I try to, you know, my character <laughs> is transactional. And he has no time for intimacy. So that's my like subplot. If I had one, you know. Okay. Um, my character is based on a on a real agent named Joel Siegel, and he is one of the biggest and best. But he sacrificed his personal life and his family in order to take care of his players and their families. And his big rub with his mother was like, when are you going to find a nice girl and settle down? And Mm -hmm. he had sort of lost that ability to to have that intimate connection. So my character in this scene, this way is referencing is on the phone when there's a woman trying to grow some intimacy. And right. he's sort of like <laughs> you know, struggling with that. That's you know? bananas. You know, yeah. That was so eloquently put, man. Yeah. Give that man a round of applause for that, man. Yeah, she was trying to fuck, basically. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Yeah. Trying to make money, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, Troy, what's your work-life balance like? Because it can be so easy to just be on the go, 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 and kind of just put your personal life to the side. Like, do you make sure you have one day specifically where you just detach from the entertainment industry or... Me? No. Mm -hmm. It's no. My life is um, uh, perfectly combined. Like me and my wife and my family are on the same journey. And, uh, you know, we 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 do everything together. And and so it it works. It works. But I can understand that it's difficult. You know, so I have no problem finding intimacy. (laughs) Yeah. Nice. In fact, that's probably why I'm an actor, because I just need a hug. Troy <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is here from Ballers. Hey, man, your grandfather, did you get a chance to spend time with him at all? I did a little bit. He passed away when I was uh, nine. Okay. Um, but uh, Henry Fonda, I'm talking Henry about. Fonda. Yeah. He did. Uh, my mother put together a film called On Golden Pond. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which was a Catherine play in Hepburn New York. Catherine Hepburn was in that, right? Yes, and okay. Catherine Look at you. You know uh, it all. No, well, let me tell you something, man. Before you continue, not to cut you off. The Grapes of Wrath. It's great. It's okay. brilliant. One of the most brilliant movies. Yeah. When I was coming up in grade school, that was a movie. We had to read the book, and then they showed it. Like like Citizen Kane or something. Right. Like, you know, it was one of those movies that you had to watch, and then we had to dissect it. And, and so that's when I kind of first discovered your grandfather. They did that in my school as well, which okay. was sort of odd, sitting <laughs> yeah. in class watching my grandfather. But they used it as like an allegory for immigration. Exactly. Mm. Right? Yeah. Like, because yeah. it, it was essentially about people leaving the Dust Bowl and moving, looking for jobs that were migrant workers. Mm-hmm. And it translated to the story of, you know, uh, Mexican and Central American people immigrating to the United States and into Los Angeles. And yeah. That's how they use it in my school. So what did you remember learning from him? Or well, he, what? Is the, uh, my mom produced and created on Golden Pond. She took the play from New York and made a movie because she wanted to do this with him because he was um, cold. They, they had n- not the most intimate life. Yeah. Um, and they tried to resolve their issues while making this movie. So it was very profound. We got to spend this. It was... Um, 
he died the following year. Mm -hmm. But we spent this last year, this summer, on, on a lake together. And uh, he was very quiet and a painter, and I wanted to be a painter for many years. So we would we would fish and we'd paint together and mm. bake a pie, and, and that's really who he was. So it was yeah. a real nice summer where you had a no-pressure connection to a relative that you just felt safe around. You know, I don't yeah. know how to really put it, but that smell of... M musk and polyester that you know yeah. whatever it is yeah. from your childhood when you you go to the lap of, mm -hmm. a, of an adult and you feel mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. you, so, that's what you remember that huh that's what i remember you know i have a f sort of very fragmented family like okay. it, i didn't really um you know we didn't have i don't have people coming over my house and cousins and uncles and yeah. i have them but we don't we're f we're very fragmented and it's something that i sort of always wanted and looked for and, and but didn't really have it at home. So um, moments like that, just quiet moments with my grandfather meant a lot to me. Man, thank you for sharing that with us. We're going to come back, yeah. man. Right. I appreciate that, man. Right. I feel right. I feel a even stronger connection to your grandfather. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Troy Garrity is here. I'm opening up the phone lines, 888-742-3345. Hey, man, you ever memorize any rap verses? No, I have a problem. We'll talk about that up next. Sway <laughs> morning, shade four five. Baller, shot caller, twenty. Hey man, let me tell you something. Just because you go to some fancy college, don't make you better than me. Don't make you better than no one. I probably won't ever even go to school, but I'm gonna do something with my life. I'm gonna have me a business. I'm gonna open up a shop. And despite what you may think, I ain't pretending to be someone I saw on TV. This is who I am. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to be like this tomorrow. Isaac Rosenberg. <laughs> Sway in the morning, shade four or five, is with us. Mm. <laughs> uh, Troy Garrity, man, um, you were in the barbershop in Next Cut, too, right? Uh, no, no, the that's barbershop. That's the recent one? Yeah, that's the, you I, was I in did a, a little cameo. A little cameo in that, man. Yeah. And um, DB was commenting on your character because he really liked your portrayal and what you were able. Go ahead, DB. Uh, no, I do, I do. But actually, what I wanted to ask you about was Soldier's Girl back in 2003 because. Well, well let's go back to Barbershop first. Oh, I'm going to stop my question. No, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I wanted to ask about Soldier's Girl because uh, Justin Bieber was in the news recently about turning down a role where he was going to have to play a gay character. Uh -huh. And in Soldier's Girl, even though your character wasn't necessarily gay, he was attracted to a man who preferred to dress as a woman and that sort of thing. So he was attracted to trans. Uh, trans Transgender person, right, 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 and I mean, were you at all uncomfortable when you first thought about doing the role or anything, or did you have to overcome any kind of like, all right, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that, or yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what would you say to him if if, if he was kind of on the fence about taking the role? Well, that's his prerogative. I mean, I get it if you don't want to do it, he mm -hmm. doesn't need to do it. But um, me personally, you know, as an actor, you don't have a lot of creative power, right? Oftentimes, you're just a puppet. Justin Bieber can write. He's got the liberty to write and do whatever he wants to do. Mm. Me, I'm looking for some glorious writer to come down and say, I've written Shakespeare for you, which just mm. doesn't happen. So Soldier's Girl came along, and it was a real story, and it spoke about sort of what I considered real um, injustice, and, and it was powerful, and that just doesn't happen. So uh, I figured, you know, fuck it, challenge myself and do it. I did it. Mm, I feel good about it. It got, was hard. Yeah, it got nominated for a Golden Globe. Wow. Yeah, it was a big event. Like we had a, it was one of the biggest screenings at Sundance, and there was like, uh, there was a lot of uh, gay and lesbian military people in the audience. You know, this is before "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" was repealed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it it ignited a very big um, um, conversation. Yeah. Well, what were your reservations? Um, I've never had a man's tongue in my mouth before. Okay, so it okay. Was like, it okay. was tongue? Like, well, yeah, he did it. And I was like, I, 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 I was like, you know, we're acting. You know what I'm saying? Like, we did it, and he stuck his tongue in my mouth. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> And he, said, and he was like, I'm, I'm, he's like, I'm sorry, I just got into it. And I was like, oh, all right, all right. But they got that on film, so, you know, and I got a Golden Globe nomination. Yes, you did. Yes, you but did. more importantly, I mean, the real person that the movie was about, um, Calpurnia Adams, she was in the Navy, and then she transgendered, um, transitioned, whatever the word is, and... 
um, you know, she lost her lover that who I was playing. He was murdered by his bunkmate in the um, infantry mm -hmm. oh, because wow. of it. And um, and she was on set. And so there was like a real feeling of um, responsibility and weight to it. So so everything else about being uncomfortable or whatever just didn't really matter at that point. Nah, yeah, and, and, and as yeah. an artist and as you guys know, when you get an opportunity to like affect some sort of change, you got to do it. I mean, Heather knows she wrote songs about gun violence. <laughs> good point. Good point. Yeah. Point to him, yeah. I want to talk to you about that because you bring up as an actor and then as an artist. You know, in hip hop, we change our names all the time, and this is why I didn't make the connection when Sway was telling me about you. I was like, I know the actor, but is this really his lineage? Your last name is Garrity, but you didn't want to use Fonda or your your dad's last name. Hayden. My dad's name is Hayden. Hayden. Yeah, it's a bit confusing, and to be quite honest. I haven't got a real legitimate straight answer out of my parents, but I didn't choose it. They gave it to me. Oh. So my father's family came from Ireland, and his mother um, had nine sisters, and they were named Garrity. And they all lost their names um, to men. Right. You get married. So yeah. when my parents, who were quite notorious, uh, had me, they said... Um, we don't want you to be burdened with our name, which is like totally narcissistic. But they also <laughs> said, we, you know, we want to reject, uh, you know, the patriarchal monolith of uh, America. And, you know, why should a woman lose her name? So we're going to we're going to give Garrity back to you. Huh. Dude, That's just, fire. Sound just like yeah. your, your grandfather when you talk. So to the, but the anonymity is out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Um, so. you brought up Heather B's song about um, gun violence, but um, you you've actually um been out there in the streets in the trenches fighting against gang violence and gun violence, right? Yeah. Uh, talk about this organization that you founded, the Peace Process Network. Mm -hmm. What is that? Well, the Peace Process Network is no longer uh. Um, an actual organization, okay. but it still exists in theory. So when I moved, I went to acting school in New York, and I moved back to Los Angeles. My father was a state senator, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. was working for him. And one day, a guy named Dwayne Holmes came into the office, and he had just been released from prison. Dwayne Holmes was one of the heads of uh, one of the housing projects in Watts. Mm -hmm. And he helped uh, draft the ceasefire in Watts in 91 that ended about 30 years of war between the four housing projects. And uh, a girl had been killed. And they were ready to go back to war. And um, I was in the office that day, and me and him connected because uh, in high school I had friends that were uh, active in, mm -hmm. in various elements of the street, and I have a, an emotional attachment. So me and Dwayne became friends, and I said, uh, you know, I have a property up in the mountains, and we can take, uh, why don't we take everybody up there and reconstitute a ceasefire? So we got four 15-person passenger vans and brought representatives of all the neighborhoods up on top of this mountaintop. We played football. We uh, had a barbecue. And then um, at about 11 o'clock at night, they all went into a, a private room. I, I did not go in the room with them. And they came out about three hours later with the new ceasefire uh, uh, constituted. Wow. wow. And after that... After that, out they were like, I, I was tired. I was like, can we please go home? And like two yeah. hours, and they were like, no, no, no. We wanna, we wanna stay up in the mountains. I said, okay. And there's a bunch of kids there too. So I said, well, let's. You want to take a hike? And they all said, yes. We 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 hiked up this mountain, and there was all these little kids uh, from Watts with me, you know, with their fathers and whatever. And um, I was standing next to these two kids, and the sky was filled with stars. And this one kid said, man, we don't, you know, we don't have these stars in Watts. And the other kid next to him said, no, we do. We got that one and that one and we have that one. And he knew out of the whole constellation which stars he could see from his neighborhood. And everyone heard it and it was very, very powerful. And um, and then they got into a fist fight over whether someone saw a shooting star or not, and then we went home. Uh -uh. <laughs> but from, but uh -uh. from that day, me and, <laughs> yo, Troy is hysterical. And then, and then from that day, I was like, me and Dwayne, I was like, you know, th this is really amazing what happened, yeah. and people need to know about it. Yeah. And he said he agreed, so we started organizing a march, and in the process of organizing the march, we realized that there was people like him 
in every neighborhood yeah. mm -hmm. who had sort of aged out or termed out of the gangs but were acting as de facto police or peace officers like if a crime had something was missing or stolen instead of going to police you go to this person and they were neighborhood fixers ray yeah. donovan's of the hood yeah. yeah so we started finding all these people in different neighborhoods in black communities in mexican communities in central american communities and you know uh, Latino communities and black communities don't talk on the streets, at least in L.A., because mm -hmm. of prison issues. Mm -hmm. So we had to go inside the prison and negotiate things. And wow. we brought, you know, people from 18th Street, Marasa Vitrucha, Grave Street, um, Bounty Hunters, Pyru, all these people together to begin to talk about we're all doing the same things here. We all join gangs for the very same reason. We all have the same wants and wishes. So what's what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And why can't we all work together as a community to try to like if we're part of the problem, then we actually contain the solution. Yeah. Mm. So that was sort of the theory. Wow. Um, they started. A, uh, we got a class at um, uh, Cal State L.A., you know, that we could certify people as gang violence experts, which would give them a little um, freedom to walk around the neighborhoods and not be harassed. Because the police uh, were obviously very skeptical. Yeah. You know, like, well, you're a gang member, you're making a super gang, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we needed to find sort of protection so our people could, you know, work. And, um, Troy and we made some wow. progress. Troy Garrity, you might have to implement that system today. Um, man, I want to thank you for coming by. Real quick, we got oh, Ness on the line from Orlando. Ness, go Hi, ahead. Say Ness what's up to Troy Garrity. Hey, man. I've been a really big fan, and when they touched the barbershop, I really liked the work you did in that, man. Like, I've been keeping my eye on you ever since you had uh, that role. Um, like, that, that, that role, man, really, because being a person that I like hip-hop, sometimes I don't get that acceptance, and when I, con I connected with your character, man, man. I, really, I really like the work you're doing, and you with the off cast of Paulers, man, I'm a really huge fan of I, I produce stuff too. I, I went to full sale, so now now I'm in the game. I just got you know my feet wet, and I'm getting there. But like I said, man, just keep up the great, amazing work you're doing, man. I just wanted to tell you that, man. It really affects me in in world of what I'm doing. And I'm saying it's really powerful, man. You did you do amazing work, bro. Man, I really appreciate that, and good luck to you. You know, one step in front of the other. Ness, you're a got citizen, it. Ness. Explain him on it. You That's got total dope. universal acceptance with that citizenship. Real quick, last caller, Aaron from Atlanta. Go ahead, Aaron. Good morning. Hey, Aaron. Hey, good morning, everybody. So, um, really quick, you know, your mom is on the show, Grace and Frankie, but yeah, she, mm -hmm. you know, in her character is going through a lot of kind of intimate stuff. She has sex scenes and she's talking about sex. Even though it's a character, do you still feel a little weird watching her on that show, which I love? <laughs> That show is so PG compared to how my mom is in real life. Oh, <laughs> I can't no. even tell you. <laughs> really? Well, she's having sex in front of you and stuff? No, not I'm sex not. in front of me, <laughs> but, you know, my, my, my sex conversation with my mom was like, you know, have, do you have any toys? And I was like, what? I'm 12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, first, time I, first time I had a date, I went into my, my room and my mom laid a faux fur blanket on the bed and draped like red chiffon over the lamp. And I was like, what? This is so inappropriate. I mean, it comes from a good place, but. Yeah, I loved her. I loved you know, her she's mom. like, here, I, I bought you a book. I'm like, what is it? She's like, it's the intimate couple. It's how to, it's how to um, meditate into the woman's yoni. I'm like, God. Oh, <laughs> that's good. I ain't pond is gangster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's gangster. All yeah. right, Aaron, thanks for your call. You're Thank citizen. you, Aaron. I'm that's sorry if right. I um, <laughs> took that too far. <laughs> Make sure you watch Ballers every Sunday at 10 p.m. Yeah. on HBO. Troy Garrity, man, um, plays Jason on the show. Thank you for coming by, Appreciate brother. it. Thank you for having Absolutely, me. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, we got a new segment coming up. It's called The Jones Zone with our intern, Joan. For the first time, she's making her debut. Sway in the morning, let's go. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shea 45. Kimmel.